Hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your Climate Watch update for the month of October, brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our business partners at IBM. So this time of year, spring, October, this is the sort of time of year where we get lots of storms and windy westerlies coming our way. It's what we call a very chaotic weather pattern. However, there's a little bit of order to the chaos as we go through October. We're going to see an uptick, I think, in high pressure. That doesn't mean it's going to be settled and calm because around the outer edges of highs like this one, you have low pressure like that, and that creates the windy zones. So as each high moves through, there's windy weather all around it. So I don't think it's going to be overly calm, but with an uptick in high pressure, that could actually mean some areas lean a little bit drier than usual. So we'll cover all that in a moment for you. But we kick off October with low pressure in Australia. This has brought you know nearly a million lightning strikes in the last day or two in this area here. And when I say the last day or two, I mean the last day or two of September. So that is on its way towards New Zealand, but October actually kicks off with high pressure. So let's have a look at where the highs and lows are going to be this month. We kick off with October 1st, which is the first week. And so for October 1st, a weak cold front clearing the upper North Island, just a few little showers, then it goes away. High pressure behind it is coming in for the weekend. And then as we kick off the first full week of October, these subtropical winds will be spreading down into the New Zealand area. And not just New Zealand, High pressure, look at that, goes all the way down towards Antarctica. So we're going to have a subtropical airflow moving right down to the Antarctic ice shelf next week. That's likely to push temperatures well up above normal for the Antarctic area, uh, at least on the coastal side around New Zealand and Australia. But for New Zealand, it should be fairly mild as we kick off next week. And this just shows what a messy weather pattern we've got as we go into the start of October, which by the way is normal. As we go into the second week, there's a little bit more order. That's what I was just saying before, a bit of order to the chaos. So you're seeing the high pressure zones kind of linking up into a line. So that makes it a little bit more predictable because south of that, you've got all these low pressure zones and storms. And that means you've got the usual westerly winds in between low pressure and high pressure. And that's what you see where my hand is here. That's the windy westerlies. Now they seem to be pushed down south of New Zealand as we get into that second week. This is for next Thursday, Friday time. So you're noticing high pressure to the north of New Zealand does extend down, but with low pressure nearby, that means more windy westerlies. And that encourages rain on the west coast and drier weather for eastern areas. But a little bit of a rainmaker here will be very welcome, I'm sure, around parts of uh, Bay of Plenty and East Cape. As we get into the third week, it doesn't look a lot different from the second week. And so we kick off the third week with this map. But then as we head towards the end of the third week and the very end of the month, this weather over here is spreading in across both New Zealand and Australia. So it looks as though very stormy weather is coming in as we head in towards the mid to later part of the month that's west of Australia. In the New Zealand area, it remains fairly calm. There's a cold front coming through here, but it's only just you know, running into high pressure and then it sort of stops, can't go up further because this is just a high pressure belt. So we're likely to mean that means it gets capped. So that's likely to encourage more windy nor'westers over New Zealand and that warm airflow coming out of Australia. So warm, windy, high pressure seems to be more of the theme than it does with lows. The lows seem to be a lot more further south than they have been in the month of September. So that's probably the biggest change. Soil temperature at the moment, well, temperatures are lifting up in eastern and northern parts. The grass is growing down in many places now with uh, longer hours of sunlight, plus the warmer weather and the rain that's fallen in both main islands. I know it's still a little bit dry in South Canterbury and still a little bit cooler over here around parts of Queenstown and the west coast. But for the most part, the lime green is getting up into the mid-teens zone, so fairly mild. That's good for getting pasture growth. Soil moisture. Now, I know this map's very pixelated and New Zealand's very small. We've got a larger version of New Zealand in a moment, but I quite like this map because it's more accurate, I think, than the ones we get out of the New Zealand government. So what it shows you is the rain is coming back to the western areas. Eastern areas are still looking a little bit dry, and compared to Australia, New Zealand's actually looking quite green. This is the uh, liquid water in the top two meters of the soil. So it's quite a useful map to look at. So this is New Zealand closer up. Now granted, it's pixelated, 
but I still think it's a very helpful map to look at. And what it shows is still Canterbury is very dry. You know, we're hearing that from farmers and growers around parts of Canterbury, especially South Canterbury and central areas saying that it is quite dry and that's certainly what you're noticing here. It's also normal in spring to be seeing eastern areas dry. Hawke's Bay, a bit of relief has come through here. This is nowhere near as brown as it was a month or two ago. We're seeing the green return, and I'm hearing that on the ground. Very happy farmers and growers around Hawke's Bay. But just be aware, the rain might just sort of taper off a bit now as we get back into the westerly winds. So we'll show you that in a moment. In fact, let's sort of start now with the rainfall coming up. So this is the next week, departure from normal. And what it shows you is in the blue areas, those are the areas where the rainfall is wetter than usual for this time of the year. White is normal and red means you guessed it, drier than average. So New Zealand leans drier in the eastern areas for the first week. This is only the first week, but to be honest, as we saw with those long range models, a lot of high pressure coming through maybe around the second and third weeks. And even if we don't really get the high pressure zones, we could get a lot of westerly winds. So that encourages a little bit of wet weather for northern and western areas and western areas of the South Island looking about normal, I guess, maybe a little bit drier in some areas. But we are noticing sort of average rainfall coming through for many parts of the country, but drier than usual around Canterbury and maybe a little bit drier than average on the eastern North Island. Nothing too extreme showing up, not for that first week anyway. This is the total rainfall accumulation for the next two full weeks, taking us right through, in fact, to October 15. What it shows you, and we'll get a closer up version in a moment of New Zealand, but what this shows you is the westerly winds are really active at the moment. A lot of storms down in the Southern Ocean showing all the rainfall in this zone here, whereas high pressures dominating Australia, that's why you're seeing very little in the way of rain for that entire zone right there in the pale blues and these areas don't even have shading they're off the scale zero millimeters on the way so uh, what this means is rainfall in the southern ocean accumulates along the western side of new zealand so we've got rainfall on the west eastern areas are looking a little bit drier like canterbury a closer view of that shows not a lot of rain in the next two weeks for Canterbury. Banks Peninsula here, only in the five millimeter mark. Uh, further inland, the greens take you up to 10, 15 millimeters. So it's a little bit of rain, but not much. That's two full weeks and only 15 millimeters, or put another way, one millimeter a day. So that is not very much. Um, Hawke's Bay, you're faring a little bit better because we do expect a little bit of low pressure for the first week or so around northern New Zealand and that encourages a wee bit more rain so maybe another 20 millimetres or 40 millimetres for some of you coming through in the next two weeks. Now that's not huge rainfall but it's very welcome after the rain that fell in September. It's putting things closer to normal than they've been in a very long time so that's the next two weeks and a reminder Go to ruralweather.co.nz or weatherwatch.co.nz and you can see your rainfall totals daily for the next 10 days out. Okay, taking a look at the rainfall departure from normal. This is from IBM and this is for the month of October. Now look at that. The areas in white, which you can just see in the far north and down here around parts of coastal Canterbury and Otago, Southland and hugging the very west coast, round about normal but almost everyone else leaning just a little bit drier than average. Not a huge amount, but maybe 10, 20 millimeters drier than it should be. The good news is seeing hopefully the far north getting a bit of rain, but the margin of error with these long range maps means that you can't fully lock in a very narrow strip like that up there where it goes back to white. Uh, but you can certainly notice drier weather does seem to be the dominant feature across the country. And when we stretch that out to December, it still looks pretty dry across the country, although maybe some signs of La Nina when you're seeing these areas here leaning in the wetter category. So a little bit of rain coming down, that'll be very good news for Hawke's Bay, but just a reminder, the wider upper Hawke's Bay or central Hawke's Bay area still leans drier. Now that could shift around a wee bit over the next few weeks, but it's very good or helpful to see that there might be just a little bit of rain coming in to some of those northeastern parts of New Zealand, but otherwise expect it to lean drier than usual for the next few months ahead. That's according to IBM. Taking a look at the temperatures, departure from normal, October, no change in what we've been seeing every month for the last year and a half. Basically leaning uh, warmer than average by about half a degree across New Zealand. And when we stretched it out for the rest of the year, right through to December, 
still half a degree warmer than average. And in fact, some southern areas are getting closer to one degree warmer than average. So that might mean more westerlies and northerlies are going to be in the forecast for the next few months ahead. Sea surface temperatures, we'll just quickly end now with the La Nina discussion. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly. In other words, which areas are warmer and cooler than they should be. So it's pretty easy to tell that there's a bit of a La Nina starting to happen. It's what they call a La Nina watch. La Nina is measured at the equator up here at this line. See the blue? That's cooler than average on the eastern Pacific, but it's warmer than average over on the western side. That's a classic sort of sign that La Nina is forming. And it normally means warmer waters in this part of the world, but it's spluttering in our part of the world. So while it's warmer than average around Fiji, it's not around Queensland and New South Wales. And so New Zealand itself leans a little bit warmer than average, but this zone to the north between us and New Caledonia, where a lot of big rainmakers and tropical cyclones track down towards us, we'll be running into cooler weather, so cooler waters, I should say, which can weaken rainmakers. So that's quite interesting to, to note. One last feature on this map, this is at the time of recording, that's uh, Typhoon Mindul. And notice how it's got that circular area where it's cooler. That's basically like a hand in the bath churning up the, the water. And so the surface, which is what we're measuring here, is warm and warmer than average right across this Western Pacific area. But the storm has uh, churned up the colder water underneath it. So just kind of unusual. You don't see that very often. So we talked about La Nina. We're into this watch zone. This is from the Australian government, the Bureau of Meteorology. We trust them a lot because they're not commercial. So they have got this, well, they are, but they're not commercial like they are in New Zealand. So you've got the watch showing that it's sort of hinting towards La Nina, but it's not alert. And we're not in La Nina. It's just saying, hey, I can sort of see it on the horizon. But in saying that, we've been saying that all year. We've been saying La Nina is on the horizon all year. And when you look at what the international models, the average of them all says is it's going to be in the same position right through even maybe into February of next year. So no great changes on the way, potentially. Um, it looks as though we're pretty much stuck in this pattern. The Indian Ocean, their dipole, uh, this is like the Pacific Ocean's La Nina and El Nino. And this is also leaning a little bit towards the negative, which means more rain for northwestern Australia. But next year, it goes the other way and starts to dry out. So it, it doesn't look overly dramatic at this stage for any extra big rainmakers coming in from the tropics. So that's why it's pretty quiet at the moment around the tropical islands. Of course, the cyclone season kicks off on November 1st. So we will be watching this part of the world a lot more closely at that point in time. And we'll have a little bit more information about La Nina and if it's going to happen or not. But for now, New Zealand's just two small mountainous islands, partially in the roaring 40s. Spring is here. It's chaotic. And we're likely to get more westerlies, which lean drier in the east. That's pretty much what we're seeing in all those models. That is all from me for this month anyway. We'll see you again in a month's time as we go into November and get closer to, well, 2022. <laughs> we'll see you then.